Hello guys, time for our monthly tradition of tips and tricks about Laravel from Twitter for the last month. So here's an example of video for July and this video will be 15 tips from August from Twitter. Just a rapid fire of tips and tricks and if you want me to expand on some of them just reply in the comments. Let's dive in. Tip number one is about route naming and prefixes and nesting. So kind of two in one. Probably most of you know that you can do route naming and here's a zoomed in example so you can do route name dot with prefix but did you know that you can do two levels or more levels deep so admin dot with route name and group number one and then inside route name users dot with another group and then as a result you can reference that route with name admin dot users dot whatever is afterwards the next tip comes from martin which is actually a package recommendation more than a tip so if you want to add reactions like likes dislikes or something like that to your eloquent model there's a package kira lab laravel reactions here it is on github and if we scroll down to quick documentation so after composer require and migration and configuration all you need to do is add things to your eloquent model and then you will have methods like react react to remove reaction toggle reaction and so on the next tip come from myself again this video will contain a lot of tips from me because admittedly it's summer and not too many people are active on twitter and i continue my mission of shooting practical laravel docs on twitter here and there so the next tip is about enums with php and if you have the enum you can use that in routes like this so instead of just having string as a parameter and then manually validating the values you can just type hint enum and let me zoom that in again the zoomed in version so if you type hint the enum then the enum value will be automatically validated and if someone passes the value which is not among those four then laravel will automatically show 404 error page the next tip comes from wendell who became much more active on twitter over the last few weeks or so with laravel tips so this tip is about http pool did you know that laravel http client can do something like this so if you have two API endpoints to the same server, but not necessarily, you can launch them as pool, so kind of together, and then combine the results something like this. So responses array will contain the keys of each API endpoint. So you get as profile and as orders, and then you combine them together. Probably the best use case if you have an API where one endpoint doesn't give you the full information, so you are kind of forced to launch another API call to get more data and then combine them together. The next tip, me again, and another tip from the docs, which is actually surprising to me. So for many months, I've been doing the campaign. I call it campaign hashtag practical Laravel docs, and I will link in the description below how you can follow that. But people get so excited with so many likes on those tweets that I just continue basically sharing various pieces from the docs with maybe better, more practical examples than just full bar or something like that. So anyway, routing with subdomains, and there are two cases here, static subdomain like this for versioning of API or dynamic subdomains with variable. Again, the zoomed in version. So static subdomain is pretty clear, nothing really to emphasize here. Maybe namespace is important for controllers, but for dynamic subdomains, it's often used for multi-tenancy applications. And then that variable becomes a required parameter in all the controller methods. So if you don't pass string account here with the same name of the variable, then Laravel will probably show 404 or another error. But then what it allows you to do in each controller method, you can use that account to filter the data by tenant, by region, or by whatever that subdomain means. The next tip comes from Newton Job, and it's actually eight tips in one. So a few things I typically change at first sight with new or reviewing the project. So let's quickly run through those. Again, the zoomed in version, and it's pretty opinionated, so you may pick one or two that you may use. So user is, so comparing two models may be done not with keys or specific columns, instead just is. It will, from what I remember, compare the primary keys, the IDs. Then same here is used with gate allow if instead of abort if with 403. So gate allow if automatically returns 403 status code with forbidden. Next thing, order by created at descending may be shortened to just latest. And then there's the opposite 
oldest created at ascending the next thing where by primary key may be done by where key or the opposite where key not with laravel eloquent next thing parsing the string into carbon object may be done without carbon directly so request date will do that for you and we will get to request something at the end of this video in another tip then carbon make may be replaced this is very debatable with date make from what i remember it's from php class i'm not too sure what would be the benefit of that because carbon has more functionality anyway return redirect back may be shortened to just back and return redirect route may be shortened to just to route so two quick helpers the next tip me again and the docs again which got surprisingly a lot of likes 150 although it felt like everyone knows that so password confirm is the middleware and here's the zoomed in version so if you have some sensitive route group or just one route you may add middleware password.confirm which comes from laravel so there is no package or starter kit to install and then the user would need to reconfirm re-enter their password to access that area best example is github so if you want to add collaborators or enter some sensitive change to the repository it will prompt you for password the next tip comes from wendell repeating guest on this video did you know that there are sub queries with add select for example so if you have a regular query and then you need to add a relationship with just one aggregated data from that related table for example users with latest payment or last payment ad specifically the timestamp the paid ad of max aggregated function and the user id of the payment column would be equal to user's id from the main query with function where column and that last payment at would be returned as a variable for each user which you can immediately use in the main query with order by that value the next tip from myself again and from the docs again did you know about response stream download Sorry, my voice is getting off, but I will still continue to finish this video. So bear with me with whatever voice I have at the moment. Anyway, instead of building the CSV file on the server and downloading it, you can put the CSV on the fly like this. So response stream download, and you're building the CSV on the fly. One thing to notice, a comment from Andrew here, gotcha here, remember to clear the buffer, otherwise it still ends up in memory. But yeah, try it out and see if it works in your case. The next tip comes from Nexai and it's about SaaS registrations for free trials, for example, where people can kind of cheat using the same email with plus something at the end, which Gmail allows. So how to get around that? Here's the zoomed version of the problem. So you can add plus something to gmail.com and it should be registered as a separate email, although it's redirected to the same email on the client side. And the solution, potential solution in three steps. First step is to add a helper function in the user model using regular expressions to clean up everything after plus prefix. And the next step, and this is based on my video, which I will link in the description below, prepare for validation. So you can process change the input data before validation rules. So in this case, you call that clean email in prepare for validation, and then the rules will validate the data already processed, already cleaned up. And then the third step, just use that form request and it will automatically return the validated data without any plus or prefix at the end, also validating that it is unique. So in this way, one user would be able to use only one email address, even including those prefixes. Or in fact, I just realized I told prefixes, they are actually suffixes, but I will not reshoot the part of this video because I want to still save my voice for a few more remaining tips in this video. The next tip comes from me, but not from the docs this time, from practical thing that I found out, the hard way actually, in the Laravel notifications, in the emails, if you want to add two buttons, so by default that notification contains a button, like go to link or something if you add two actions here only the last one will be shown and if you don't want to change that template completely one of the workarounds that i found just use line which will build links instead of buttons but you can have multiple lines with routes it may not look as good but it will work well the next tip comes from Benjamin and it's about Cedar optimization for performance. And in addition to recycle, which is a separate tip, 
what he's saying is that if you have images to generate during your seeders, you may offload that to the queue to a job. And he provides a short 13 seconds video, and I will launch that here to see what is actually happening. So the seeders are running, but then in the background, start development environment, then the images are generated in the background and meanwhile you can move on doing other stuff and the images would be generated sometime later and you don't care that much about that the cedars would be finished by then the next step from me again and from the docs again if you're working with external apis which return json in multiple layers multiple levels you don't necessarily need to have something like this json decode and then work with three levels of array keys checking if something is not null request input also can use dot notation with multiple levels deep and would provide the same functionality so you don't need to manually call json decode and also it even works with arrays and including the asterisk value try it out in your project and see what values are returned the next tip comes from philip and he has a specific example but for a more broader message that you can use livewire but use alpine or even tailwind css effects instead if you want to get the result faster sometimes if you care just about the local change so you wouldn't wait for server results from livewire so for example instead of here you could do something like this has checked and here's a video quick demonstration so let me wait for it so yeah that's using classes as you can see the loading indicator for a second or so but using input it is faster but this is again just one example of a general message on the front end if you can afford to do something on the front end with javascript or css it may be more preferable than using livewire directly for performance and the last tip in this video i told you we will get back to request so these are casting request functions if you care about the type of the variable for example if you want to perform specific operations for example request date immediately returns carbon which you can then do diffs and more transformations or for example request enum would automatically validate if something is passed not in the status class values then it would return null instead from what i remember so yeah 15 tips about laravel random topics what have you learned we can discuss in the comments below and what do you want me to expand on maybe as a separate video also put in the comments and also i want to remind you that i have two more youtube channels because i received a comment on my recent video about vs code and github copilot that you should promote this more so okay i will mention that i have a channel called filament daily of course about filament with a lot of things happening around filament 4 and also ai coding daily where i experiment with tools and practices of coding with ai but not vibe coding it's geared towards developers who want to be more effective with ai tools in their daily work so you can subscribe to either of those meanwhile this channel is still laravel daily and i will continue shooting videos about our beloved framework that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos